New at six, one day after a federal judge dismissed a lawsuit against the Virginia Employment Commission, saying over the last nine months that embattled agency has made significant progress in clearing a backlog of long ignored claims. Now a Richmond man says his 18 month struggle with the VC VEC is still going on. James Keene says his troubles began at the start of the pandemic when schools closed and he became the full time caregiver for his teenage daughter with autism. Initially from May to June, um, I was on the phone hours at a time. Uh, it was just frustrating because I just could not get through. James Keene knows the frustration many Virginians endured over the last year and a half trying to get through to the Virginia Employment Commission. When the pandemic led to the closing of schools across the Commonwealth, his job at Kroger came to an end. I had no choice but to leave work because I'm my daughter's full-time caregiver because she has autism and is nonverbal, requires constant hands-on supervision. At home with his 15-year-old daughter, he applied to the VEC for benefits, knowing he was unable to work, but also sure he was eligible for Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, or PUA. To his surprise, the VEC said he was eligible, but just for regular benefits. Which confused me because I knew I wasn't available for those benefits, because by the VEC's own rules, you have to be available to work and available to look for work, of which neither I, I was capable of doing neither. But the VEC's decision meant he was not eligible for the enhanced federally funded PUA benefits. That led to long hours on the phone and a back and forth with the VEC over the next year. Initially, he resisted taking the benefits, hoping to sort out what he said was the VEC's mistake. He received benefits for several months, but then they stopped and more confusing correspondence followed. September the 9th, I got a letter from the VEC stating that they were going to take November and January back because I was found ineligible to receive VEC benefits. And on the same day, I got a direct deposit of about $1,300, which wasn't explained to me then. I had no idea why I got that money when I wasn't qualified to receive the VEC benefits as per their letter in September. So Keene then tried to apply for PUA benefits again, and again he was rejected. So they kicked it back to the VEC. Three days later, I received a letter from the VEC stating that I was eligible for benefits, full stop. But not for long, apparently. In late December, the VEC sent him a shocking letter. The VEC is now saying that I'm not qualified to receive benefits, and they're taking it all back. VEC spokesperson Joyce Fong did not respond to multiple emails over several weeks about Keene's case. But as he awaits the outcome of his appeals, he says he has no intention of giving up. The reason why I'm fighting so hard for these benefits is to be able to provide for my family. We lost a car at the beginning of the pandemic. So we are dealing with one car between my wife, myself, my mother-in-law, and the duties that I have as a full-time caregiver. And just before we went on air, Keene says someone from the VEC called him again, saying he was not eligible after all because he took a leave of absence from Kroger. He says he will continue to fight for his benefits and that he hopes Governor-elect Len Youngkin stays true to his campaign promise of making dramatic changes to fix the VEC.